is Stan Tolgachov, and I'm a Mohs surgeon and dermatologist at the Surgical Dermatology Group in Birmingham, Alabama. And this study was done in conjunction with the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Our group at Mayo has been studying frontal fibrosing alopecia for several years now. And this is a culmination uh, retrospective review study of 148 women with the disorder. Cassard and colleagues first described this entity in 1994, and many think this is a variant of lichen plano polaris. Frontal fibrosing alopecia typically affects postmenopausal women. However, uh, men have also been affected by the disorder. Last year, we published a criteria outlining the diagnosis of frontal fibrosing alopecia. Clinically, patients present with loss of the frontotemporal scalp, as well as the eyebrows and the sideburns, and they may even have some eyelash hair loss. Also, some patients have facial papules, which are small bumps on the forehead and the temple area, uh, which is something that has been described in frontal fibrosing alopecia. Other features may include hypopigmentation in the frontal hairline, lonely hairs, and depression in the frontal veins. And unfortunately, this disorder has not been recognized until the last 10 or 12 years, and therefore, studies uh, that are large on this topic have been elusive. We found 148 women that met our diagnostic criteria that we published, and 111 of them had uh, biopsies consistent with lichen plantar polaris or frontal fibrosing alopecia. The mean age was 62 years old, and the symptoms started at around 57 years of age. The clinical features are those that were previously described. However, we did notice that itch or pruritus was noted about 67% of the patients. 18% of patients had lichen planus at other body sites, and 10% had oral lichen planus, and 10% had vulvar lichen planus. 45% of patients had a history of hypothyroidism. Depression was diagnosed in 28% of patients, and other comorbidities are listed in Table 3. As previously described in other studies, close to 90% were postmenopausal patients, and in those patients whose hysterectomy status was disclosed, almost 40% of them did have a hysterectomy. In patients whose hormone replacement status was documented, 63% uh, actually had hormone replacement therapy. Uh, treatment and the responses are noted in Table 4. Of note, uh, the patients that did the best, which included slowing of the disease progression and disease stabilization, actually used combination therapy with systemic agents. It was very important for us to publish this paper in a widely read medical journal, as these patients often present to their primary care providers or other specialists, but are very embarrassed to discuss this condition. As medical professionals and physicians, we should be sensitive in discussing this topic with our patients. And if that conversation develops, then workup and treatment should be discussed. To our knowledge, this is one of the largest single center studies of frontal fibrosing alopecia. If we wanted to be in a picture of a patient with FFA, it would typically be a postmenopausal female around the age of 62 with preceding itch at the hairline and loss of frontotemporal hairline as well as eyebrows and eyelashes. Future studies will focus on treatments and causes of frontal fibrosing alopecia. Interestingly, there have been early observations of uh, care products such as sunscreens that are mostly physical blockers as well as potential makeups that may be associated with frontal fibrosing alopecia. Uh, these products and the association between FFA uh, are yet to be elucidated. This association has not been proven uh, and therefore it's important to note that patients should not be afraid to use uh, sun protecting agents. Our group continues to research this topic to shed more light on the disorder to better serve our patients. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.